Well, I'm leaving Utah and moving to North Carolina. These plans kind of came out of nowhere. Wasn't expecting this drastic of a change, but it's time to load everything up behind my cab over and start a new chapter. Once I'm on the road on the cross country trip, I'll have plenty of time to show you guys all the details that led to me making such a drastic change and why doors closed out west. But for now, let's fire this truck up and go pick up a trailer that I just bought for this trip. As you can see, I got my cab over right over here. Got this big forklift here because I just bought this trailer. It's this white one underneath this dump bed. So the goal is going to be to fish off this dump truck bed with the forklift, get my semi truck hooked to this bottom trailer, pull it out, use the forklift to remove this top trailer that I did buy, and then we'll hook up to that one and get out of here. I bought this 25 foot box so I could store all my miscellaneous little items as well as my storm chasing Subaru so I could have a daily driver. So I have the front of it strapped to the army truck and the rear of it suspended by the forklift and now let's get it on the trailer. getting ready for my cross-country trip as you can see loads of soot back here because this flex pipe blew out so we have a major exhaust leak right there so i'm gonna try and just do a temporary fix by clamping this exhaust clamp around it and that should cover up that crack fully and then we'll figure out a more permanent solution later okay that's all tightened up we'll find out later if that leaks okay i'm inside the semi right now got my dash all torn apart because as you can see I have engine oil leaking in my dash and that's coming from the oil pressure gauge because there is an oil line that runs oil all the way up to there and then this gauge just slides into here and that o-ring is just super flat and dry so i think it's leaking at that so i've got another gauge and its o-ring looks equally as bad but i'm gonna slap it in and see if that seals and if not maybe we could throw some sealant on it okay here's the front of the box lightweight stuff up there heavier stuff down here and then the rest of the box is going to be filled with my Subaru. Trevor's helping me out, set the four post lift. We moved it right to the edge of the bay. So we'll put the car on top of that and put it at the level of this box and then drive it on in. I think that'll work out well. Oh, good morning, guys. I was trucking at 3.45 a.m. last night and blew a tire on one of my drive axles. So, limped it to the next exit about seven miles away and then called it a night. So, we're going to have to deal with that now this morning. Today's off to a good start. Ugh. Middle of Wyoming. Okay, I've got a 12-ton jack. I think it'll do the job. Some three-quarter inch tooling and an impact. And hope and dream. So, let's get after this tire. Tight. Now I have to tackle these. Maybe the impact will bust them loose. And to clarify, I'm not overloading these axles. I'm right at 34,000 pounds, which is the legal limit. So that tire wasn't overloaded. It was just old and gave up on life. So luckily we have a spare that's even older and even more ready to give up on life. So we'll see how lucky we can get with this one. Okay, all done. We'll see how far we get down the road. We got real cold last night, so let's see if she starts. Approximately 
be 10 hours later. Alrighty, it's time for dinner. Let's get my kitchen set up. Now anybody that knows me knows that I hate eating out just because there's so many junk ingredients stashed away in fast food. So normally on my road trips, I just pack all my own food, but packing for my trips just got a whole lot easier now that I have Factor. Now Factor is the sponsor of today's video, which I'm super thankful for because this rig is currently getting about 3.75 MPG towing this load. So this is a costly trip, but also I'm thankful for Factor because I'm starving right now. Tonight I'm going to have some chorizo chili. So let's get this heating up. Dang, that hits the spot. But you know what's easier than an exhaust powered stove? A microwave. Look how easy this is. Just hop in the fridge, grab this here jalapeno popper burger, pop some vent holes in the plastic, throw it in the microwave, and in two minutes, my hot meal will be ready. Now I love Factor for my busy schedule because there's no prep time and no cleanup time for me to get a delicious meal. So I don't have to deal with any of these dirty dishes. And Factor is cheaper than takeout, but you're still getting chef crafted, restaurant quality meals that are fresh and never frozen delivered right to your door. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use my code Goodrich50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. So go get your first box for half price if you use my code Goodrich50 at the link below. Now let's get back to the road. Oh, you guys. Time for another round of this. So we blew this inner on the other side of this axle. So I do have one more spare there. We'll swap it on. And then I'm almost tempted to just ram this military truck into this box and push it back to get more weight back on the trailer tires rather than the truck tires. But ultimately we're not overloaded on these axles. So I don't hate the weight distribution we have right now. We're just dealing with old tires. I'm getting pretty nervous. This one's loose. This is our last one that's tight and this square is twisting off. So I'm gonna try to heat it up. And if that doesn't break it free, this is probably gonna twist right off and then this tire will be stuck on it. It's the bad tire. All righty, let's see how lucky we can get. Ah, it's twisting off, maybe it'll Work better with the impact, or maybe not. Next morning. Well, beans that we're in the middle of Nebraska and we've already burned through my two spares. I went and bought another spare. So we have a nice fresh tire there in case we blow another one. But for now, my main concern is getting ahead of the blizzard that's incoming because I don't wipe out the roads. 12 o'clock midnight. Uh, I just had a big old blowout. Sounds like I lost two tires. I'm on this bridge, this long bridge. It happened right at the beginning of the bridge, so I can't even pull over yet. So I'm having to try to limp, but it sounds bad back there. Well, I limped it off to the next exit. I'm not excited to get out and see what's going on back there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's wonderful. looking really nice. Although the real champ is the inner tire on this side. As you can see, there's literally a gap underneath the outside tire with how much that axle's lean. So all the weight of this entire axle is just on this single tire right there. So why can that guy be so good and those two over there are just spontaneous like a bust.
next morning. All right, right now I'm limping things along to a tire shop in 25 miles. Now I blew two tires at once and I only had that one spare, but luckily that was that brand new spare that I just bought. So I put that single tire on and this morning I limped it to the next tire shop so I can get a new second tire for that axle. So I'm waiting for that new tire to be mounted right now, but I figured this was a good time to share more of the details on why I'm moving to North Carolina, why I left Utah and what all went into that. So for the last year, I've been renting some shop space from this awesome family that I'm friends with. The only issue with that was they have eight shop bays and they store a bunch of their business equipment in there, but they decided to move out of four of them and double up all their storage in the other four bays. So that made all the indoor space pretty crammed and I lost the little area that I was working in. So I started looking for different options for shop space I could work out of. And I wanted more shop space anyways, cause my future plans for projects that I wanted to build are gonna be much bigger than I was doing in the past and I would need more space to build these projects. So I had this one friend that I met like three years ago and we had grown really close over the last summer cause we just realized we had a lot of things in common. We had a lot of the same interests and a lot of the same future plans. So we figured it would make sense to work together and he was going to quit his construction job and join me on the YouTube stuff. And it was going to be a great plan on paper cause his family had some acreage that we could build a shop on. So for all last fall, we were doing the groundwork and preparation for building a new shop and even poured a little bit of concrete. So everything seemed like it was gonna turn out great. I was about to have all the shop space I needed and I was gonna have him helping me with the YouTube stuff. And we had some great future plans of big things we were gonna to accomplish together. And this had been the plan for five months. We were doing what we needed to do to chip away at building the new shop together and him getting ready to quit his job to do YouTube with me. But then one day he called me out of the blue and was like, hey man, I'm starting to feel like it's not the right thing for me to do to leave construction and come work with you on YouTube. So I wanna call off us working together. So I was shocked because he kind of did a complete 180 on me on what he was interested in and what he wanted to do with his life. But it turned out he grew pretty interested in this girl and that shifted his priorities in life. And he felt that staying in construction would be a more stable career path and be better suited for pursuing a more of a future with this girl or whatever it was. So that closed the door on that with what I was planning on for the last five months. And obviously it wasn't going to work out to move into that shop. And I needed a new shop for winter because that current shop I was renting out of there's no indoor space. I was spending most of the fall just working outside and that wasn't going to work for the winter. So I didn't know what to do and I didn't have any options for other shops I could move into. So I went ahead and just called my hometown best friend just because I kind of needed somebody to talk to. And I had known this guy since we were like six years old and we grew up in the same little town in Florida and we tore up that town together. So it was great to catch up to him. He had been doing really well, working really hard and making a lot of smart decisions and buying properties and flipping properties. And he flipped up all the way to a bunch of acreage in the mountains of North Carolina. So we started brainstorming and he wanted to shop anyways. So we thought it'd be cool to combine our finances and split the cost of a nice big shop. So I was like, heck yeah, man, this will work really good. It'll be awesome to be reunited with you and it'll be really nice to have this shop. So I'll start packing. So it's crazy how things work. The door ended up closing on building that shop with the one guy out West, but 30 minutes later, this North Carolina door swung wide open and it's a really awesome option that I'm really excited for. And Excited for what's to come next. So let's wrap up this trip and get started on this new chapter of my life. The main good thing is that we got ahead of that blizzard though, because that blizzard seemed nasty. I've seen a lot of reports and videos of a bunch of semi trucks wrecking and sliding off the road and a whole mess back there. So we just nearly escaped those conditions. So I'm stoked to have not having to deal with that. All right, we are so close to our destination. I still spent last night just off the highway so that we could have daylight for the last little bit of mountain roads we got to deal with today. So let's see if this truck will finally start without some starting fluid. Yeah, it's warm enough for that. 
Nice. And it has just been non-stop rain my entire time in North Carolina so far. All yesterday, all last night, all today. I'm ready to go back to the desert. This is way too much moisture. Alrighty. Let's do this thing. Now we're down to just this little dirt road. I gotta figure out which driveway is my buddy's. He's gonna come meet me and make sure I don't get all kinked up in this muddy, curvy dirt road. trying to swing through over here because we made kind of a loading dock over there to back into but it just got super slick here and my truck would not turn over to here to get back that way however if i stay over here i'll have good traction it's just over there where the mud is so luckily we have a dozer to work with so he's gonna pull me backwards and then i'll reset back into this kind of loading dock right now. I think that'll be good enough to drive off. Here's a super old chimney that was the only thing left standing from a house that was built on this property many years ago and we had plans to mold it into the side of the shop but with the lay of the land it was going to make more sense to put the big 14 by 14 garage door on this end of the building so we decided to end up taking it down all right as you can see we got our main chain going to the middle of the chimney on a really big spot that shouldn't break and we also have a safety strap going up to the very top just so that the top stays controlled and gets pulled this way as well don't want it to fall back on the concrete slab. Well, that works rather perfectly. What follows is a brief construction montage.
We hope you enjoyed this brief construction montage. Here she is. Big old 14 by 14 door on this end. We'll have a lot of big projects rolling through there in the future. And here's the inside. Don't have any lights yet. Don't have any power around this shop yet, but we'll get that sorted out soon. Here, I'll give us some light in here. So yep, 30 by 50 feet, insulated walls and roof. So it's great to have all this space to myself. Can't wait to fill this thing with a bunch of awesome fabrication tools and whatnot and really crank out some good projects in here. So you guys will have to stay tuned.